Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial about how to make a black hole grenade. Um, so, um, if I go into this uh, scene and I play it, and I press the G key, then what it does, it generates a mesh, and that generates itself a black hole, which, which applies a force, and which puts objects in, and it also distorts them visually, right? So, when they get small enough, then they get just get destroyed from the scene entirely, right? And this uh, affects different physics objects differently. So as you can see, this one has a bigger mass. So what it does get pulled in, but it doesn't get uh, eaten completely, right? Whereas these small ones, they get uh, pulled in and, and completely eaten, right? Uh, it also works with the uh, skeletal mesh, as you can see here. So if you play again, you will see this pulled in, right? Which is really nice. Okay, so let's see how this works. So I'm like a, an overview of uh, different elements evolved, and then we can go into them one by one and and talk about the details. If you're on the project files, uh, e I I will put the link in the description so we can download them. You can you can follow along from them, and you can even use them in your projects if you want. So that's really cool. It will be just easier uh, rather than following this and 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 going in one step by step. But I do still encourage you to watch this video so you get into the details to understand what's happening. I will put the different sections in the video on the bottom so you understand. You can jump in to whichever section you want. Okay, so let's take it from the beginning. So again, this is the overview. So we press the key and then we spawn the grenade. Right, we edit the force and then the grenade here uh, what does it just has a lifetime uh, of a few seconds and and then we generate the black hole and destroys itself uh, and so the black hole is this blueprint here and it's generated and it changes its size and then it kind of dies off right so let's just explain really quickly what's happening uh, to this and we're going to the details so I've put here uh, an instance and I have a control variable here so I just make it stay active so it doesn't die off so I can explain uh, easily what's happening um, let's just move this here so if I play now uh, as you can see what happens is that when objects uh, go into its influence they have a force supply to them then uh, they get stretched only visually so the uh, the collision doesn't get stretched like this is a visual distortion on the the mesh right this is i find it really cool right and then they get into this area which is actually a visual distortion of fresnel distortion uh, which is gravitational lensing as you can see it also uh, influences the objects that are behind it and then um, so when you when you approach the object what happening is that it gets smaller and smaller and when it gets at a certain size then uh, it's kind of it's swallowed by the black hole and it actually gets destroyed I don't know if you saw it here but it gets destroyed from the scene that's basically what happens and uh, it's um, it's quite straightforward just to know just so you know all the distortion that happens is actually only visual right okay so now let's go ahead and take the elements one by one so we'll start with the beginning and which is the player character so if i go into the player character here so we have an event when we press the g key you can, of course, configure this to whatever you like. Uh, so what we do is just spawn the actor. So uh, we have the the, the spawn uh, node here. And where we put it, it's actually I've configured a location here, but you can put it to whatever you like. Here uh, it's the grenade spawn location, right? So I'll take that. Um, 
So we'll take that and, and put that as the transform location and then we'll orient it as we have the camera here, right? So we get to take the camera from here and we get this rotation and we set it to the to the grenade. Alright, so that's now that it's spawned, it will return the reference for the spawned object here. Uh, and uh, and what what we do is actually get the static mesh from it. So an actor could have different types of meshes. So we just take a, a static mesh. If you have a let's say a grenade which is more complex, then you can go ahead and put here uh, something custom so that you select the mesh that you have uh, in order to add a force to it, right? So this is what we're doing. The idea is to throw it so we are at force in the direction we're looking, right? So to do that, we get the we get the the the, um, the forward vector of the camera right here, and then we'll multiply that so we get a vector with a certain uh, amplitude. We'll multiply that with the force that we want to apply, and then we apply that force. So that's it. This this is just what happens into the player character. Anything that you see here is uh, linked to other stuff for manipulating physics objects. So you can go ahead and look into that if you're interested. You can even use that in your game directly. Uh, but that's it in the player character. Okay, so if we go into the grenade, okay, this is quite simple also. So when the grenade gets uh, spawned here, it gets created. Then we just wait for a certain time, so it uh, it moves around to a certain place, and then uh, we prepare to spawn the black hole. But before we do that, we want to disable its collision. So that's what we do here: is set no simulation, so it stops it's in place. Right? It doesn't move around until we spawn the actor, uh, and then we spawn the black hole. We get it, we put it to the location of the of the grenade and then we just destroy the grenade right so we destroy the whole actor so that's if if you want here you can go ahead and say uh, you can put a code so where when uh, you can say for example when it hits something you can go ahead on uh, here and say on uh, object component hit or something like that on when it overlaps then you can you can go ahead and, and generate the black hole. It really depends on how you want to trigger it, right? So I just trigger it in time. Um, so yeah, so yeah, that's it for the, the grenade. Okay, so we come to the uh, black hole itself. So this is a blueprint. So this does kind of everything except the material which gets put into the objects here, which I'll talk about just afterwards. Um, so let's go ahead uh, and take this slow because it's just uh, it's not very complicated, but it's still. So what happens here? It's that um, we have different objects here, and I'll I'll. Uh, I'll just uh, explain them one by one so that it will make sense. Then we go into a code will make, make sense what, what's happening. So first of all, at the center, we have what, what I call here the visual distortion. So it's the Fresnel lensing, the gravitational lensing that gets applied. And of course, the, the black spot here. So this only has, uh, let's say, a, a function as to show this distortion. It doesn't do anything else. So the second one, uh, which one is it? This one envelops, or maybe let's take it from the outside. Like let's take it from this one, right? So when there's an object that comes in here, first of all, when it enters this area, what happens is that uh, that means the black hole has uh, an influence over it. It starts to apply a force to it and pull it inside, right? But that it, the object doesn't really get stretched until it gets to this, uh, uh, to the, this range, right? So when it gets from here, it starts to get stretched inside, right? 
Again, it's only a visual stretching. It doesn't affect the collision, but it's it's quite cool nonetheless. So if we if we continue to go forward, uh, it it's here. It's what I called enveloped. Enveloped. It means that uh, the object theoretically it's kind of like a, it passes the point of no return. And then what happens here, then if we apply a uh, damping of the motion so that the object doesn't disappear really quickly, because I, I find it it's, it's cool, right? So we dampen its movement and then we, uh, here it's, it gets, uh, normally it gets uh, pulled in even stronger, right? But it's about damping here. And when it gets here, uh, it's, it's, uh, visualization let's say it's a, a visual image gets destroyed even uh, distorted even further and then what happens is that um, all the way from I think it's yeah when, when we start the envelope then we change its size so it's become smaller and smaller and then it's a uh, the center point then we destroy it when the size is becomes really small Yeah, so um, that's kind of the big picture of how this works. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and take it one by one. So here in the event graph, we can see the different functions, and I'll go over them really quickly so you understand what kind of what happening, right? So what we have here uh, um, on the top, we have uh, the, when we begin play, uh, it, this is what happens here is we um, we scale up the black hole. We make it bigger because we we actually spawn it a, a small size, and then we make it bigger here, and then uh, we wait for a certain time, and then we make it smaller again, and then we release uh, all the objects that are have been in under the influence and then uh, you know it's some objects may be under the influence but that they not they have not been destroyed so then we have to put them back let's say how they were before at least their properties right so that's really um, kind of its light lifetime here right now we have different uh, events here uh, depending on the what's happening so what we have is detect and remember the objects so when we have a begin overlap on the influence that i talked about here uh, then what we do is remember the objects that we are influencing and put them so that we can we can attract them right and then when it goes outside it's also it releases the objects right so it's overlap and overlap and then what we do on each frame is just uh, destroy components that are really small and attract components that are under the influence so that's basically it right this is this is the whole event graph now before i go into the details here it's important to understand uh, the uh, distortions that take place visual distortions because what happens is that they they get cold here right so if you don't understand that it will be difficult to understand what's happening here so there are two main distortions that uh, are uh, taking place one of them is the visual distortion here so it's just the material as you can see black hole material here is this is applied on this object and there's another distortion, which if we go back here, it's applied not on the black hole, but actually on the objects itself, they get, uh, they get pulled in. So whereas this uh, distortion here, it's the gravitational lensing, then you can see it affects all the other objects. This one that is applied here, and that we're gonna look at, it's the, uh, uh, the distortion was, which stretches the object, right? So that's why it needs to be on the subject, because it's it affects the uh, objects itself, right? Okay, so let's see the first one 
on the black hole. So if we could go here and open up the uh, the material. Okay, so this material instance will take the black hole material here, which actually is the material itself, not an instance. Okay, so what happens is here it's we'll try to create this kind of a black disk or black area and distort the image, everything that comes from behind it, right? So first of all, we have the opacity here and we're using a Fresnel to, to, to generate kind of this uh, opacity that it's a bit fuzzy on the, on the outside. And then we have the refraction, of the material. So we put a uh, transparent material right here and then the refraction, what it does, you use a Fresnel again, but this distorts the image behind. So here we have put some uh, handles in place, some parameters so we can, we can mm, customize things, right? So uh, the black exponents, how, how much uh, the blackness, it's the, the, the size of the blackness, right? The black part. And then here is uh, it's uh, actually how fuzzy it is or more or less how much it's transparent inside. So it, this you can play around with, but you can see, for example, if I do this, um, it's okay. So like, for example, this easy, these are some uh, things that go together, right? You can't really, um, play one with without affecting the other so it's kind of how fuzzy it is in the middle right so if i make this bigger now then you'll see it's really fuzzy right so and then what you have here with the sharpness it's actually only the edge right so then if we modify this you get the the edges that are sharper th theoretically uh, maybe i put this a bit too high um, so then if we put this here, you can see it's it's kind of this area, it's sharper, right? So just play around with these and, and see what happens as they're put as, uh, as parameters, then you can actually go ahead and modify them. You can even expose them in the black hole here, right? So if you want, you can, as I've done with these, you can expose them and change them for each uh, instance that you uh, create right that's kind of it um, and uh, for the refraction so it's it's everything that it's behind the object the rays that come behind the object the, the image again I uh, here you can go ahead and play with them uh, I don't know that much about these but uh, you can you can you can affect how the lens is actually you have a bigger uh, lens effect right so yeah as you can see it, it, it creates the the lens effect right so yeah just go ahead and play with this and 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 see what's happened so that's basically the material for this it's really simple okay so if we go back now if we go back here then i've explained this material now we want to see the distortion the visual distortion on the objects so these are your objects. Uh, you can have normal objects. I've just used like uh, this generic objects here. But uh, as you can see, so we have the material here, then we have a material instance, right? So here, if we, if we go ahead and open the material, <coughs> uh, then we can see what happens, right? So, uh, Basically what happens here is just we modify the world position objects because this is the stretch effect, right? You don't need to affect any other uh, component um, parameters here, right? So as I imagine your object here will, will, will actually use all of these normally. And so normal, normally the world position, you can, you can copy paste this this part into your object and just copy paste it and then connect it and it should add this stretching uh, this stretching effect without even changing your objects 
and if you want you can also make it uh, an object um, a function right so you can add it really easily to all and actually blend with the object that exists but i guess that's you can find that somewhere else right you can there's tutorials on that so let's go into this and try to explain although i don't really understand it that well to be honest i think i've pieced, pieced this together from other tutorials right but we can uh, what i can understand we can we can we can look at the uh, parameters here and i can uh, explain a bit what ha what's happening um so this is here is the custom stretch position it's actually the position of the black hole the center of the black hole so this is what you will see we'll see in the code here it's 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 uh, it's configured so Let's say if the black hole is here, that will be the position and it's in the world space normally. And so that gets, get, gets input into a sphere mask here. And uh, this again, I'm not really that, I don't know that much about it, but kind of, I think it kind of uh, resembles uh, a Fresnel or something. Uh, okay, so here we have parameters for the radius. So around this point, which let's say it's here around this point, how much uh, the the uh, the stretching extends. So this will normally uh, be on the, uh, if we go back here, it will be at the extent here, right? Um, sorry, it's enveloped. So then it starts to stretch it from here, right? So if we go back, so that's what this rad radius does. It's actually, uh, uh, we uh, we configure it from the black hole when we when we take the object in, and the other one it's hardness. It's how much it's stretched, right? Because you can stretch it a little bit, and then we can stretch it more, and then you can you can configure this so so it gets gets a more uh, let's say. Uh, Drastic, drastic effect, right? And then here we get some limping. Uh, yeah, again, this. Um, I yeah, I don't know exactly how to, because we took the whole position here and we basically lerp the 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 points of the the object between the the center of the uh, black hole towards the the points of the object real object right so this is what happens here uh, and then we get uh, this is stretch activated so then it's put to zero so that means as you can see here it's a lerp between zero and this that means that uh, the objects don't really are not are not stretched if they're not activated by the black hole so this is put in place so that uh, the object don't just stretch around the default position here right so this is why it's put to zero and then we and we when it gets to into the black hole then it's put to one so that's kind of it sorry it's not that much of an explanation but you can just copy it and play around with it right Okay, so let's go into the blueprint then again here, and we'll start with uh, we'll start with uh, detecting objects. Okay, this because this is quite simple and you should be able to understand it now. So on begin overlap on the influence extent again. If we go back, the influence extent is the biggest one. So this is when we start applying a force, and the black hole knows of the existence of the object. So what we do here, we take the actor and component where we check if the if what we got is valid and that the component that it's overlapped with the extend, the influence extend here, uh, it's simulated physics. And then we say, OK, then it's this is compatible with what we attract and then we can continue. Otherwise, we just uh, ignore the object. So let's make a pause just to make sure we take into account this. So the influence extent, let's go into the options here. 
so basically this is um uh this is uh, so it's escaping me right now but it's just a um it's a collision a sphere collision right and then you have a radius uh here that you can configure right so if you want to if you want to configure the extent you just change this and you can also output it as a as a parameter here as i've done and you can change it from the outside so that's a nice thing to have if you're interested but what i wanted to look at here is the collision actually the physics right so this doesn't simulate physics it's tied into the main scene root here of the black hole um and it's um uh i don't know if I it's enable gravity but we don't need it but i don't care uh the most important thing is the collision so let me search here right so the collision is overlap or dynamic so that is so that we know we can generate overlap events and make sure that this is put to true either otherwise you don't have any event right so we overlap everything that is physics objects and it moves and so this already here it's it helps us to filter some objects like for example the character we don't want to influence that we cannot influence uh okay so that's kind of the the options for this so if we go back now and then all component begin overlap then we check that everything's okay here as we've seen now we have register component here and what this does is well what we do here is we take the object and we put it in uh, we put it in a structure so we remember it in an array right um, okay so because we're affecting if you remember we're affecting its dampening let's go back here it's damping in the envelope extent we just make it move slower so it doesn't di disappear right away so because we we need to do that we need to remember when we register a component we need to remember the the damping here right so that's what we do uh, and uh, this is actually uh, it's actually a local variable right we create a local variable with all this and if you look here, I've created um, um, a type for this, right? Um, and uh, let's see, browse to type. So this is it's a type. It's here. We have the component and the damping and and original scale. That is because we also scale it. So we we remember also the scale, right? So just looking at that quickly so again sorry it's a bit but when we go here it's also starting when it's enveloped right it's so so it's also starting to scale down so that's why we uh we remember the scales here in this custom struct that i've created right so then we set the overlap hectares here this is a local uh, variable so so you can look here and then what we do here is we go ahead so i've created an affected actors <coughs> um, array so uh, this is an array of actors and each one of the array uh, each one of the elements has um, each one of the actors has components that are affected by it right so this which is easier to arrange like this because uh, we might have different components of the same actor affected so then we affect multiple of them then we, it's just easier to organize like this right so here um, it's also a type it's the second type so this was for the component this is for the actor and then so we have an actor reference here then all the components which is in our, an array and this array it's the type of the one that we saw right here right actually mm, is it though mm -hmm. yeah 
so it's component type uh, struct here and then we also remember the initial scale of the actor because we're gonna change it right okay so if we go back then so we have these two structs explained now uh, so if we go back just so you know we're into the register component what we do now is we uh, yeah so we go through the we just add the element the actor that we discovered to the array and then add the components to that the array associated with the this actor right so here so we just break the 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 struct um, so let's see here we uh, yeah so here we search actually if we already have the actor right because we might overlap an actor that all we already uh, have so we just check that the overlap exists if not if it doesn't exist then we add it right here um, okay and then we say okay we found the actor um, and then we go for each uh, when we complete this we go then for each actor and uh, let's see yeah so then we add if it's if it's uh, added then uh, we just add a new uh, array with the components because it's normally it's new uh, so we won't have any components uh, and uh, yeah that's what happens here okay so this is uh, this is what we do when we register when something enters here into this area so now we have all the elements needed so we we didn't we can go ahead and 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 manipulate it later and then make it come back to original um to original uh, parameters if we need to um sorry let's go back here so okay so this was register element from here sorry we can go back uh, so and the begin overlap we've registered the component so what we do here then is just to uh, configure its material for stretching right so if you remember we have a material sorry about that so we have a material on all these objects and we need to configure that so they know where the uh, where the center of the black hole is so this stretches right so here that's what we do we cast the component to mesh component uh, we set its parameters right so as you can see we we put a constant stretch position what we talked about let's open that so you know we make the connection here so this is what we talked about the custom stretch position it's put into the uh, the enveloped extent of the center of the enveloped extent which actually is the same center as the black hole and then we set the stretch activated that means that it will start stretching again this is here stretch activated and then uh, we put the radius and the radius is put to uh, stretch extent so if we go here and we look at the stretch extent uh, which was this one so we have an extent when it's enveloped and an extent when it's stretched I just configured it this way so then you can have a different stretch effects and different right so it's, it's more flexible so here uh yeah so if you look uh uh sorry uh if we go in, into the event here we have the radius and if you look here the radius is this one so it gets 
set to the radius of the stretch extent. Yeah, so that's it. And, and if you want here, I didn't actually configure it, but you could also put the hardness. So how hard it's, it's stretched, well, really, you can, you can add here at the end and just put a variable here and in the in the components here so you can you can configure it per instance so yeah so that's that's what happened on the influence extent overlap um, so again we check we register we remember in the struct the actor and the components and then uh, we go ahead and change the parameters for the stretching and that's it okay so let's go ahead now once this is registered then we now can manipulate it and uh, attract it and and destroy the things in each frame so this is what's happened here uh, so in each frame event tick then we check if the attraction is activated so this is something that i added just so that we can have can play around with a black hole just just so it's it's not active so we can see the distortion uh what was that i think it was here um yeah so it's somewhere in the variables here uh attraction activated so as you can see here it's visible in the activation here right so if i did disable this and i play now nothing happens right nothing it gets attracted here um see we still have the stretching but but nothing gets attracted uh okay so so what do we do each frame what we do is so we check if this and then we have big two big steps here one of them is destroy components so we if some components are really small and really inside the black hole then we just destroy them get rid of them and if not for the others that we influence we continue attracting them so we apply a force to attract them okay so let's go into the destruction here okay so what happens is we go through the the array uh, the struct with the actors and then we say okay if this for each one of those you have um, for each one of the actors we go into the array of the components of the custom struct that is uh, created this is a break right so we break uh, so we take uh, the elements i think you should know that so for each one of these let's see this is a bit okay so what we do here we actually calculate it if the condition is met to be destroying the actor and so this calculation so we get the component as you can see uh, so this calculation is actually done on the actor right so uh, we get the position of the actor the root component here actually and we say okay so this if this actor is at a certain distance from the center of the enveloping extent as you can see minus this right uh, then we okay so this is the distance because there's two vectors and we subtract them so we get the distance between if we go here let's say the object is here and the center is here we get just this distance from here and uh, so we take the distance and we divide it by the uh, the radius of the enveloping stent so enveloped uh, which is here right so what happens is we say okay the distance with the object and this distance from the center here are they are they and we divide them and say uh, is this less than 0 0.5 so that it means is that if it's less than half this distance here then we say okay it's it's probably enveloped and then we just destroy it right 
So uh, again, you can you can change this to whatever you like, but that's the values that I found works. Now you would say, uh, if we go back here, you would say, okay, but, but if it's a half, then it's still visible, right? But it's not really because we have the stretching and the distortion a bit. And what stretching does that uh, makes, makes it so that, that the object is almost already not visible when it's here, right? So you can go ahead and safely destroy it. So that's the, uh, that's the condition. Again, you can put whatever condition you have you want here, um, and we just we just check this condition, and if so, and then we just go ahead and destroy the actor. Now here, uh, maybe talk, uh, maybe I will talk about in the limitations about this, but uh, the idea here is that you could destroy components and not object itself. Uh, that's more complicated and I didn't want to do that here so if you really have like a complex object where you have different components in the same actor that some of them will get destroyed and some of them not then you will probably have to want to change this so that you destroy each component uh, in and of itself right which is a bit complicated to be honest and I, I prefer to keep it simple I have simple objects here like cubes and stuff like that so but but even it's even the actor right so if you go here uh, sorry the skeletal mesh if you if you take the skeletal mesh okay let's activate this again and play so if you even if you take the skeletal mesh like this it still looks normal see it and it gets destroyed correctly right so to be honest i i, would, I wouldn't change this but if you need you can do that right let's say you have a car or something like that uh but not car should be okay, but like complex objects. Okay, so coming back to this, so what we did is just check if we want to destroy it, then we destroy it, and what we do here is that we remove the index of the uh, of the actor from the uh, the array here. So that means we destroyed it and we cleaned up our references here. Okay. So that's it, and we exit. Okay, so that's the destroy component. So this means that all the components that are inside uh, the black hole, which we don't see them anymore, then it gets destroyed. So this is, then if we continue, okay, so each frame, if you remember, uh, then we have to attract everything that we, our influences, okay? So as you can see here, let's see. So we have our array of actors and components. We go through it again, right? If we say, uh, if the, I think I added this check here, if the actor is valid, just because there, there might be actors that when we destroy them, so let's see again, when we destroy them here, they might not be destroyed until we get here because uh, they they get to the garbage collector and they may not might not yet be destroyed. So this, if we say if it's valid if it's not destroyed but called to be destroyed, then it will not be valid even if it's still there, right? So that's what we do here. Uh, okay, we we remember a local variable as the parent actor. And then uh, we cycle through all the components here. We put attractive components like this, or remember it as a local variable. And then we calculate what is here, the direction toward the center. That, that means uh, this will uh, help us later, we'll see why. But it means that we calculate the so let's say the object is here and we calculate the direction, the vector of one towards the center. So this is what is done here. So you take, uh, you, you subtract the, uh, where the, the, the center of the influence extent, which could be also the other one, it's the same center, right? So you subtract that, uh, from that the uh, location of the component and that will give us the vector let's say from here to here but 
we need uh, one um, one size vector so we normalize it uh, that will give us the uh, the direction but uh, with uh, size one right so this is how we remember the direction toward the center you see how we use it and here is the distance between the objects so this we just take the distance uh, the vector length from this and this we use it later okay so here we look okay um, we want to calculate a new scale for the object as they get pulled in right so just uh, we only scale the object if they're enveloped so first we have to check if they're enveloped so here we take the distance to the center that we calculated here and we say uh, is it is it smaller than the enveloped extent so if we go here the enveloped extent is this one so is the distance from the actual smaller or it is is it inside if it's inside then we say okay it's enveloped um, and then um, um, sorry what was this initial scale okay okay sorry okay let's come back to this sorry we were here so if it's enveloped then we need to calculate the scale so we say okay the distance we take the distance to the center and then we take the uh, radius of the enveloped extent and we say so basically depending on where the object is we'll calculate this ratio and apply that to the scale so that the scale gets smaller and smaller uh, so this ratio which let's say will be 0 0.7 or something like that if it's here it's maybe it's going to be 0 0.7 or something like that and that means it will, will um, uh, it's a clamp here um, just so we make sure it doesn't go over because this might be greater than this so with that we just multiply it with the scale that the object has so if we go back to this it's actually the scale of the uh, of the actor here so it's the initial scale which is multiplied by this ratio depending on the distance from center and then with that we set actor scale uh, okay so this is this is what it's remaining from the fact that I tried to actually scale the components which was really hard so I, I actually can delete this um, yeah so then we set the scale of the actor that means it's smaller now uh, than it was before if it's if it's just closer to the center and what we do here is add the damping right so the damping um, uh, the damping, uh, yeah, we could we could also okay. What what I s noted here is that we could also do this on the entering, on the enveloped. Well, I did it every frame here. To be honest, it's it's not the most um, it's not the most efficient. But if you want, you can go ahead and uh, make it more more efficient uh, be, uh, by by putting some parts elsewhere but yeah so the idea here is that we set the linear damping of the component that we have so um, uh, here we select if it's enveloped or not then we say okay envelope damping and this is a, a damping value that you can uh, set here you can also it's uh, you can also put it to configure it from the outside if you really want so set the damping and then we set angular damping also so rotation is also damped right so now we have uh, we have scaled it now we're dampening it and then here we just move it with a force okay so we just add a force simply towards the center and the whole of this it just calculates the direction and the amplitude of the force so you have the direction of the force which we calculated earlier so again this is a vector of one theoretically 
um, and a length of one and you just multiply this with uh, an attraction force that we defined um, and uh, and you have a selection here because you either are attraction force I think it should be influence force but anyway or envelope so that means the attraction force applies here from here and the influence extent towards the up until the enveloped instance and once we pass the objects here then we apply another which is the envelope force so as you can see the attraction force here and envelope force is which is greater now you can leave it the same or however you like but yeah so this is nice nice configuration to have so then the object get pulled in even stronger so if you have uh, objects that are really have a high mass then you can put this higher and that's so they get attracted so we just apply that force and and that's it so that's a bit longer as a function but if we go back so this is basically what we do each frame right uh, we destroy and then we, we attract components. So now what happens when we release the objects? Okay, so when we release, what uh, we, we, could, we could say that destroying is releasing, and that's one thing. But release meaning that uh, either the black hole gets smaller because it's at the end of its life, and it lets go the objects or either the objects let's say uh, let's say the one object passes let's say it passes through here like this and it escapes right you can do that also the, the force is not enormous right so it goes up so when it escapes uh then we we want to unregister it and and like set back all the everything that we done before to it so it it has the same parameters as before. So what we do that here is on component and overlap again when it goes outside here. Uh, then we just under register components. So let's see here. So we go through all the actors here. We'd say okay, uh, do we did we find the actor that it's that it's overlapped here? If so, then we go ahead and break that onto components and we take a component and then on the component we apply all of these which are actually uh, all the settings mainly on the material and on the physics right so some of them we apply damping and we want to make put that back so as you can see the end damping is everything that we stored and that's why we put a, we put a custom a custom struct here because we wanted to remember all of these that were before right so we set these back and then we also deactivate the stretch material here so that means that even if the objects are around the black hole now they i mean they are along around the location which is set in the material there it's deactivated right so this is i think you remember already it's here here okay uh, so having put the component back to where it was we just remove the index meaning that we don't remember the the component and the actor anymore right and and that's it that means now the object the the black hole doesn't know of its existence and the, the object has come back to its original settings Okay, so let's go back now and and do the last part, which is actually the uh, the part about the black hole creating itself and dying. And actually, what I've done here in between the uh, video sessions, I have actually cleaned this up because there was a lot of code that was. Uh, uh, that was there that it's not there anymore. So y this is different from like the beginning of the video. So it's it's kind of normal Okay, so the idea is that here for this part What you have is the cycle that you have when we I'll say here. Okay, so it's it goes bigger 
then it waits and it goes smaller. So that's what, what happens here. So uh, when we start playing, uh, we have um, timeline here, which actually controls the size of the uh, the actor itself, which is the the whole black hole actor. So here, uh, if we go into the timeline, that you see it goes over 0.5 seconds. So you can make this longer if you want. You can configure it whatever you want, but it goes from zero size to one. And if, uh, yeah, so that's that's basically it. So what happens, we don't need anything here, which actually was before, uh, which configured enveloped elements or stuff like that, because when it grows bigger, it just activates all the other, what we've done here, right? With the detection and everything. So everything detects normally while the, uh, this thing is growing, right? So uh, then once it's grown, we uh, first we see if we want to keep it active. So this uh, parameter that I just configured. So if we check this, then it stays like that indefinitely. That's why we don't do anything here. Otherwise, we just wait for a certain duration. You can configure this again parameter, but we it takes two seconds. And then we do basically the same thing, the same timeline from here, but backwards, right? So we go from one to zero. Uh, that's it. That's why it's actually the same. That's why it's one minus. Um, and then we set the actor scale again of this. Uh, so now it's really small, uh, but just before destroying it, because we're going to destroy it here, we want to make sure now technically when it's small, when it's getting smaller, it should uh, spit, let's say, spit back the objects that it's enveloped. Uh, but just to make sure what we do here, we just go, go ahead and clean up everything, right? So now it's really small. It's theoretically zero in size. So uh, we go, we go here and we say, uh, we go through the actors and the components if they're still valid, if it's not destroying any of them. And uh, we set the initial scale of the actor. And then for the component, we're going to unregister every component that we have, right? So, um, yeah. So then after that, we just go ahead and destroy the, the black hole itself. And that's it. Yeah. Okay, so I, I just realized that I forgot to um, take into account the sizing of the black hole while setting the stretch material here. So see, we detect and remember objects, right? When, when they overlap, right? And then I put the uh, stretch extent. Right, but the problem is is that this is put only one time, and so when we scale up, we only put one, so it stays small when it scales up. So what I what I did in between, uh, so I took this and I put it so to execute every frame, so that when we scale upwards, then uh, the stretch radius is put. Um, every frame right so at the end if you remember we stopped here normally we added force and we didn't do anything else well i just added here so i put a comment to say that uh, so i cast here so and set the scalar parameter and set the sphere radius to the stretch extent right so um, here it's stretching as it goes bigger than we set it each frame so now if we if we uh, if we go here and we put it inside, let's say here, then they stretch immediately. Otherwise, what we had before, if I de deactivate this like this and I compile again and I go here, you'll see that they don't stretch immediately. See, they just get smaller, but they don't stretch. So if I activate this again, and come back, you will see they they can they start stretching immediately. See, 
now they get stretching so that's one thing i just fixed now because i realized it wasn't okay so yeah okay so let's talk a bit about limitations and maybe some bugs that can appear so if we go back uh, so this one is not actually limitation but if you see okay so this has different mass uh, let's see it says 500 kilos right so this is smaller it it depends on the volume right so as you can see if we put here let's say if we if we add one here it's con it con uh, it starts to be attracted and then it it, it uh, snaps back that's because it's a big mass and some masses are so big that you can uh, they might not get affected at all right so I I guess it's a limitation but also a feature from my point of view so now if we put it really close then it, it will really get uh, sucked into and destroyed right so that's that's one limitation if you want you can have the force in if you can you can go here and the force so if we go into each frame the attraction you can have the force here actually you check the acceleration change and then it will attract each one equally right so uh, it, theoretically if i go back here okay you can see then it, it will attract everyone okay so we will just ignore their mass right and everyone is going to be attracted the same way so this is useful if you want to check this if you want to have a less physically accurate but more like controlled environment um, okay so the other one is as you can see here uh, the visual distortion when you go into the ground or into other objects it gets it gets cut uh, i don't know how to fix it i to be honest i don't i didn't think it's I just put it a bit above the ground and and the fix it things so if you want you can you can uh, you can look into that and maybe try to fix it I don't know uh, so the other one it's about the what I said before if you go into here when we register objects and 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 clean them up um, um, let's say here um when i talked about the actor that the fact that we we actually scaling the actor and not the components so if you have a more complicated actor let's say a actor has two components like this uh they they move together right or even even the the the, the black hole itself right so you have you have multiple uh types of components inside right so if you have that then you might have problems with this here with this part of destroying uh our, our registering components right so to be honest i i guess that's a special case that you will have to take into account yourself so yeah just make sure you treat every case of the every component differently and you will have to scale the components and not the actors itself so i guess yeah i'll leave that up to you so I guess one other problem you could have is the fact that um, when you when objects get into the see like you have here right uh, then theoretically the the collision doesn't get shifted so it's and we don't see it here but the collision stays behind uh, maybe you can check this here so it shows show collision. uh maybe we can see it like this i uh, know uh let's simulate uh, yeah so so see if we if we take this closer you'll see that the collision actually doesn't it just get smaller but but uh see uh the the object gets smaller but it doesn't really stretch as it does visually so that might cause problems if you don't have uh, i don't know if you have like interaction inside the extents of the black hole inside the, the influence right okay so i guess 
that's it for the tutorial so um, I guess I will either see you in uh, for another tutorial in like one month or something or maybe in a few years I don't know but yeah uh, I guess we'll see <laughs> so you guys go ahead and make some cool stuff with this so um, yeah see you in the next one bye bye